What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new power station. This is the R2500 from All Powers. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 2016 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 2500 watt power handling with a peak of 4000 watts, a 1000 watt solar charging input, UPS function with a 15 millisecond switch over time and weighs 63.93 pounds. Taking a look at the power station itself, I definitely like how this one looks and it's definitely one of the better looking power stations out there. It just has a nice and modern feel to it. It just looks very slick with the nice black and gray color going on. It also has a very good construction as well. It's all plastic, but everything is nice and thick and nice and sturdy. Over here, I have an older all powers power station. And I mean, it's fine. It's, it's one of the power stations I use very, very often, but cosmetically it just looks like a boring little square cube nothing really special going on so in comparison you can see this one looks a whole lot better and just has a more techie appeal to it so while i have these two power stations here one thing i want to note is the size and weight difference this one here is a a little over a 1000 watt hour power station this one's 2000 watt hour but this one's a life pole 4 battery while this one is lithium so with life pole 4 you get a lot more weight and the battery is also larger so you can see there's quite a difference even though this is double the capacity of that one this is a lot more than double the weight and the size as well so this one here is a little over 60 pounds and this one's about 22 pounds i believe so this is about three times the weight of that one and standing up you can see how much larger this is i wanted to put this next to it so you can kind of see and get a sense of scale how big this is this one is my workhorse. I use this very, very often because it's very, very portable. You carry it around nice and easy. It doesn't weigh much. It's just very easy to use. And to me, this is like the perfect portable power station. This one, while it technically is a portable power station, it's not very portable. As I said, it's heavier, a lot larger. So coming to the side, massive difference over here. Looking at the thickness, you can see it's about 50% thicker much taller much wider so it's just a much much larger power station i mean that's not a bad thing but i just wanted to point that out because in my opinion the average person is not going to need this you might be better off with going with a smaller one of these if you need more battery capacity maybe get two more of these but then again if someone's looking at this one you probably have a reason why you need it in my opinion this is going to be good if you're doing something like outdoor djing or you just want something to stay in your house as a good backup power so personally for me, this one is staying in my house. It's going to be like a backup generator, basically. And then when I need outdoor power, that's when I go to one of these. It's just much more easier to move around. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking at this one. As, like I said, while it is portable, it's also much, much heavier, much larger. All right, so coming back to the R2500, one thing I really love about this, and I've been asking for this on many power stations that I reviewed, is every single port is covered i've seen some where maybe just the outlets are covered or maybe just the usbs are covered but you can see on this one everything's completely sealed off so if you have this outside or if you have it sitting somewhere you don't have to worry about dust or crud getting inside the ports everything is completely sealed off even in the back you have the charger ports here that's even covered as well with this nice flap door as well so definitely like that all right so taking a look at the ports in front you have not one but two 100 watt USB-C ports very good to see that as a lot of power stations will give you a 100 watt then the other one will be a cheaper 30 or 60 watt but it's good to have them both a full 100 watt and I apologize if you hear any noise in the background I have people doing construction nearby there's a dog barking planes flying by I'm filming outside so unfortunately isn't much I can do about that but uh moving on we have four more USB-A ports and one of these is 18 watt the other is a 12 watt Coming right down here, you have all of your AC ports. You get a total of four AC ports with a maximum of 20 amps each. Coming up here, you have your DC output. You got your cigarette lighter port here. And then you got two 12 volt 10 amp ports right down here. So one thing I like about this power station as well, and this is kind of common with larger power stations, is there is no charging brick needed for this. It all charges directly from like a PC power cable. So all your uh, charging ports are right back here. Again, nicely covered. Up top, you have your AC charging port. Right here, you have your circuit breaker reset button, your solar input, and then these two are for your solar battery. So this, they have expansion batteries for this. You can stack them on top, so you can uh, triple your capacity with that as well. 
So one other thing I really like about this power station is the Wi-Fi app connectivity. There's a few power stations that have Bluetooth app connectivity. Personally, I don't think that's very useful because as you all know, Bluetooth only works within a certain range. So you physically have to be near the power station for the app to even work. In that case, I might as well just walk over and check on the screen. But with the Wi-Fi app, I can be anywhere else, not even home if I wanted to be, and just load up the app. And as long as the power station's on, I can check on the different statuses and settings of the power station right there from the app. So taking a look at the app, this is what you'll see. Right up top, you have your battery percentage. So this is going to work great if you're charging the power stations, so if you have it outside connected to the solar panel. Instead of going out and checking on it, you can just load up the app and check on the charging status. Same thing with this charging. Have something hooked up to it. You can go ahead and look at it, how much is left from here. Right down here, you have a few different toggles you could turn on and off the AC and DC ports. So coming right up here, you have your settings tab. Inside of this, you have the first thing you have is your work mode. And this is where you could set the charging speed for the charging station. You have mute mode where the fans are not going to go on. It's going to be a slower charging speed. Then you have standard mode and then the fastest charging speed. One thing I want to note is this is a very silent power station. Even at the fastest charging speed, when the fans ramp up at full speed, you don't physically hear the fan inside. You just hear the air moving. It just kind of sounds like a regular house fan set on high. It's very, very quiet. You could have it in the same room with you and not have it be too loud and bother you. I've had quite a few power stations where when the fan ramps up, you hear a kind of a whining noise and it's, it's very loud and kind of invasive. But this is very, very silent. Like I said, you could ramp it up all the way full max load for charging or discharging, and you're not going to hear it very much at all. So as far as charging speed goes, on mute mode, I was able to get a max of 533 watts. On standard, it was 1,119 watts. And fast mode, which is the top charging speed you can get from it, I was able to get a max of 1,547 watts. Overall, definitely a very good charging speed. If this had something like five or 600 watts charging speed, it will take forever, but it's very, very quick charging at that 1,500 watts. So coming back to the app, one other thing we have here, it's eco mode. Once you turn this on, you can set it from anywhere from one hour to six hours. And basically this is gonna shut off the power station with a built-in timer. This is gonna be useful so you don't have to actually go to the power station. You can have it doing whatever you need it to do. And within the set timer, it'll automatically shut off so you're not draining battery from just it being on and still running something or just being on and doing nothing and having the AC inverter just slowly kill the battery. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero using about a 600 watt load and it put out a total of exactly 1,600 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 80%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is right there on par with most other units. Despite the AC inverter shutting off, it did say there was 5% left, so it looks like it has a safety feature that does not let you drain it all the way down to zero. Alright, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this has a power handling of 2500 watts and a peak of 4000 watts. 2500 watts is a lot of power. There's not, I mean there probably is, but in most households, there's not a single item that this power station is not going to be able to run. Nothing really uses 2500 watts in a regular house. So you're gonna be able to use something like a large air conditioner and a microwave at the same time. So this is much, much better for a combined bigger load rather than just trying to power one item. There might be some power tools or maybe a very large air conditioner that will be near that 2,500 watts, but in most cases, you're not gonna to touch that unless you have multiple things plugged in. So I don't have your traditional setup right now. If I were to hook up a microwave and a few other things, I'm gonna have a big mess out here and so many things to reach that point. So instead I just have two well, I have a hair dryer, then I have a heat gun over here. Then I have uh, two power banks I use for my laptop. These both charge at 100 watts, plugged into the 100 watt USB-C ports. And as you can see, they're drawing pretty much that full 100 watts as it's getting 192 watts total. So let me go ahead and power these two on. This is gonna put it near that 2,500 watts and we'll see how this uh, works out. In my experience, all powers is usually very honest with the power handling. I've owned a few of these now and it's always did the rated power handling if not more without any issues but let's go ahead and turn these on and see what we get all right so i let that run for about four or five minutes and it didn't shut off i didn't get to get to the whole 2500 watts it was doing about 2350 watts on average the entire time but if it did 2300 i have no doubts that i'll do 2500 no problems at all 
So overall, definitely happy with the inverter. Like I said before, with every power station I've tested from all powers, they usually meet or exceed the power handling they're ready to do. So one other thing I got from all powers is this 200 watt flexible solar panel. This one is model SF200. This is gonna be a very good and portable panel to use. I plan to put this on the roof of my shed, but it's already gonna be winter soon, so I just postponed that to do it to the spring. I have two of these, but the other one's still in the box, so I just have this one. This is a very light panel. You can see it's very flexible as well. Very thin, it only weighs nine pounds in total, whereas the other panels, the folding panels, usually somewhere around 22 pounds, I believe. So very lightweight. With two of these, I should be able to get somewhere about, I'm assuming about three, 350 watts, something like that. I did test this one out already, and I was able to get on a very good sunny day, 180 watts. This is a 200 watt panel, so overall, very good efficiency. So definitely a good uh, solar panel to look at if you need something for the top of your RV or like in my case to throw on top of your shed or your roof. Just overall a nice and sturdy panel. And like I said, one of my favorite features is how uh, incredibly light it is. So if you need to put it back in your house and take it out every now and then, it's not going to be such a large hassle to move around. Overall, this is definitely a great power station. Not only does it have a good capacity and power handling, but you also get a nice 1000 watts of solar charging as well. So if you happen to be looking for a larger power station, I would definitely recommend this one here, which again is the R2500 from All Powers. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.